Hey there and welcome back. This video is all about the new up and coming European server. I'll be going over 10 different things to focus on to maximize your overall progression and set you up for success as the server grows and balances itself out. Now, there are a few things we learned from the launch of the Asia server. So my goal is to make sure that you don't miss out on some of the opportunities the new server brings. Now, I'm assuming that you will have some sort of premium from either purchasing a founders pack or having the three day premium that comes from completing the tutorial. So before we get into the video, make sure to join the Discord community if you're a solo player looking for people to play with or an experienced group player. We are working on building a community for all regions to do both PvE and PvP content. Make sure to enter the giveaways. I give away 30 day premium every two weeks and currently have a giveaway going for the Albion Online EU Founder Pack. All regions are eligible. Now without further ado, let's get into the video. So at number one is choosing the correct founders pack for you. So I'd recommend anything with the five day or three day advantage. Not only will you have a huge advantage for getting early access, but you'll also get premium included either the 90 day, 180 or 360 day, depending on what you choose. You will also get vanity skins that will hold more value down the road. So I'd wait for prices to go up in the future. So hold them for now and sell them later. Now for me personally, I'll be going with the $99 version. I'll get the five day head start and six months of premium. I personally don't care much about vanity skins. Whichever it comes with, I will more than likely throw them in the bank. Now, number two is viable builds for PVE and PVP. So there will be a few cheap viable builds that you can decide to use based on what type of content you're looking to do. If you wanna focus on PVE, and plan on mainly killing mobs, running dungeons, or just gathering, you'll wanna focus on the nature staff. It is very cheap to make and will be the king of PVE. Now the downside with nature is that it's very PVE driven. It would put you at a disadvantage in most PVP scenarios. If you're looking to partake in some PVP, I would recommend a spear build. It will do very well early with its versatility, especially come tier six. Another option would be to go with tier three quarter staff and switch into a double blade staff at tier four. You have a good amount of damage and mobility. The material needed for these weapons are much simpler to acquire than the other items. The good thing about all these weapons is that they are part of the hunter tree. So make sure to start with the bow in the tutorial. Now, number three is min maxing the tutorial. So make sure you do the tutorial. You'll benefit from a few different things. First, you'll unlock your tier two gathering and acquire the tools needed to do it. If you opt out of purchasing a founders pack and will be starting with no premium day one on the official launch, you'll want to do the tutorial and take advantage of the three day premium provided by completing the tutorial itself. Now, one last benefit of doing the tutorial is that you'll be able to purchase mules at three silver each. Make sure to make a bag in the tutorial and carry up to four mules. This will help your economy since mules will be the only affordable mount for the first few days. Number four is islands. One of the first things you'll want to do after you complete the tutorial and make some silver from either gathering and crafting is purchasing a tier two island. Tier one island will cost you about 20,000 silver and tier two does cost about 500,000 silver. One thing to keep in mind is that you'll need to have at least seven days premium to purchase the island in the city of your choosing. Now, the reason behind purchasing a tier two island is that it unlocks farming plots and the farming merchant. One thing that we learned from the Asia server launch is that horses and ox are very valuable and will sell for hundreds of thousands of silver. You'll purchase the horse and ox from the merchant and grow them on your island by creating a pasture. Now, before you can unlock the animal breeding tree in your destiny board, you'll need to unlock farming. So make sure to create a farm on your island and plant a few carrot seeds. Once you harvest them, it will unlock tier three crops and animals for you. You can then turn around and feed the animals the carrots that you have harvested. Since you will have premium, they will grow 50% faster and should be ready within 22 hours. So make sure to buy an island as soon as you can and work on making crops or mounts. Uh, now to saddle your mount, it will take additional material. So for example, saddling a tier three ox, will require chestnut planks and the horse will require tier three thick leather. The good news is that you don't have to create a saddler on your island to saddle these mounts. You can head over to the starting zone and use the saddler available there. It is the only shop that is unlocked up to tier four. Now, once you've created your mounts, it is time to put them on the auction house and reap all of the rewards. Number five is gathering. Let's talk about what resources you need to gather while waiting on your crops, ox and horses to grow. I recommend gathering stone and hide. Stone will be extremely valuable at the start of the new server since people will need to build their islands and shops. I wouldn't recommend maxing stone out to tier eight because it does fall off down the road and it will make you very little silver. However, I do recommend focusing on at least one and attempt to max it out as fast as you can. The first players to make it to tier eight will be making loads of silver since everything will be overpriced. 
My personal recommendation will be hide and fiber. I see a lot of upside to quickly maxing out these two skills as they go hand in hand with important crafted items. Now, number six is converting silver into gold. If you plan on playing Albion Online for at least six months, you want to invest your extra silver into gold. When the server first opens, the cost of gold will be much cheaper. As time goes by, you'll notice that the server will balance itself out and become a lot like what it is now on the Asia and America server. As of right now, it costs 5,583 silver for one gold. I'm more than confident when the server opens up, gold will only cost three to 500 silver each. This means that an early investment will pay out at least 10 to 15 times the amount. I also recommend holding onto the gold that you're given in your founders pack as it will carry much more value in a few months. You want to put yourself in a position where once your premium expires from your founders pack, you won't have to stress about trying to make enough silver or spending real life currency to renew your premium. You want to take advantage of a new server and what it has to offer to set yourself up in the future. Now, number seven is the way black zone and Abba roads will work. So black zones will be restricted. Areas will be extra populated, making it harder to farm. You won't be able to farm fame. You'll need to be one of the first that goes out with tier three build and go deep into the black zone just so you don't get ganked. Now roads, roads will be difficult with low combat fame and only having tier three. I would recommend recommend avoiding them at the start since groups will be roaming, killing elite mobs and bosses. You are better off investing your time doing something else. You might get the urge to gather resources out in the roads, but keep in mind that you only have a meal which will get you encumbered very quickly. Now, number eight is chess and rewards from favor and might. So for chess, I strongly recommend purchasing conqueror's chess from the energy manipulator in any major city. These conqueror chests require 5,500 favor points. You'll get favor points from doing activities out in the black zone. As you gain might from gathering, completing objectives and PVP, you will unlock rewards that will grant you favor. However, heading over to the black zone might not be the best way to start. A great place to do this is in the mist, since the black zone will be overcrowded and too risky. In the mist, there will be objectives that you can complete that will provide you with might as well as unlock rewards that grant favor. The Conqueror's Chest provides you with large amounts of silver and combat fame. If you really want to get ahead or catch up on the server, I strongly recommend you invest your favor into Conqueror's Chest themselves. At number nine, the black market. The black market might be the fastest way to become a billionaire in Albion Online. Since the server is new, there won't be many items available in the game. The players that get their crafting up to tier eight can see insane amounts of silver. The way it works is that SBI or Albion Online will create buy orders on the black market to get items into the game. However, these buy orders won't be your normal buy orders. They'll be for hundreds of millions of silver. This is one of the main reasons I recommend spending your time focused on either one or two gathering skills. The faster that you get to tier eight, the more silver there will be to make. Now the black market is in Carleon, which is a contested zone and will have ganking groups trying to intercept transports. My best recommendation would be to do this with a guild, a group of people, or have someone scout for you and transport during non-peak hours. It is risky, but the reward is well worth it. Now number 10, which I believe might be the most important one here, is have fun and try to find a community. As gamers, our instinct is to min-max everything, and at times that sucks the fun out of the game. If you aren't able to play 10 to 15 hours a day, you might feel that you can't keep up with everyone else on the server. The truth is, no matter how much you play and how much time you put in, there will always be someone doing more. So my recommendation is to set yourself up for success, focus on things that you can do with the time that you do have, go at your own pace, and try to find a guild. It doesn't have to be a guild that has CTAs and sucks the fun out of the game but a guild or a community that you know that will have something for you to do when you log in. Speaking of which, if you are looking for a community, make sure to join the Discord. We have a growing community for all regions. This will be a great way to find someone to do content with. And if you enjoyed the video, make sure to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel for more Albin Online content. Like always, stay epic, stay legendary, and I'll see you in the next video.